Well, the uh, the e-learning projects. That's mostly using computers to put together a resource that can be aimed at either the general public, it can be aimed at students. But the idea of that is that rather than going into a lab and performing an experiment, so to speak, you would make this resource as maybe a revision aid. Like I, for example, made a revision aid based on cancer cell metastasis and invasion. And that was as a revision aid for second year students that sit the cells and tissues in human disease module. And so there's lots of different software that you can use. I personally, I used PowerPoint and then published it via some software called iSpring. And so by that, I could make animations that are moving on the screen and have a voiceover over the top of it. And once I'd synchronized the two, I had me explaining what was going on on screen. So it's an opportunity to give students, if you're aiming at undergraduates, to give students a different means of accessing that information if they hadn't grasped it from the lecture content there's another way for them to look at it and you can have quizzes and things during it and in order to collect data from that you can have a survey before and after to find out whether your resource actually worked and then you go up and write a report based on that data. Well I made it so that like, I put the students in the position of a cancer cell so to speak so it was more of a there's a metastasis cascade essentially that goes from the cancer cell detaching from the primary tumour all the way up through migrating through the stroma, getting into a blood vessel, surviving in the blood circulation and then getting back out of the blood vessel and forming a secondary tumour. And so there's stages in that. So I took the students through the different stages via a series of animations and a series of quizzes along the way to check that they were grasping that. And you can have things on screen where they have to click on a certain thing and another text box pops up, that kind of thing. So is that uh, what you anticipate that you're also going to do uh, when you're a teacher, something similar? Or? I'd like to. I mean, a lot of teaching at the moment is very, it's very finite what you're even allowed to teach in the sense that there's such a lot of content in the textbook that the students need to learn that your priority has to be teaching them the content in the textbook. And I think that if students aren't necessarily grasping the content from the material in the textbook, then it might be good to be able to come up with these sort of resources to give them that as well. Well, overall, the project is actually worth 30 credits, along with a 10 credit literature review that you do in the first semester of your final year. But of that 30 credits, only 25% of it is actually for the resource that you make. Another 15% of it is for what's called project performance, and that's based on how well you communicate, how well you meet deadlines, that sort of thing. And then the other 60% is for a project report, which can be up to 20 pages long, and that should include an introduction about why you've made this resource and why it's important, um, a method and material section about what you actually did and what design process you went through. And then you have results, which will be, in my case, it was comparing the before survey data to the after survey data and seeing whether the students improved and also looking at people's comments about what they found most useful and plotting those into graphs and things. And then you'll have a discussion section where you'll then discuss those results, maybe discuss what you could improve about the resource, what was useful about the resource, and link it back to your introduction and say why that was then useful and different learning styles and things. That sounds like it was a lot of work, is that true? Um, it's quite a lot of work, but if you keep on top of it, it's not too bad. As in, if you don't leave everything until the last week. Because for any learning project, the uni actually give you four hours a week. To, uh, this year it was two hours on Tuesdays and two hours on Thursdays. And that's compulsory that you go into a computer cluster at the university with the e-learning team and make your resource during that time. And as long as you're using that time productively, it is possible to complete your resource during the hours that they give you. And then you've got the time outside of uni to then write the report. That sounds like the software you were using you weren't acquainted with before. Is, is that true? Um, well, I personally used PowerPoint, which I'm fairly familiar with. But I was learning how to do animations and things through PowerPoint that I wasn't aware that PowerPoint could do. It turned out that it could do a lot more than I thought it could. But then there are also people that have used things like Soft Chalk and Opus, which we won't have been familiar with. But the e-learning team are really good at teaching, uh, teaching you like step by step how to use it. And there's online tutorials and things for all of the software. So you don't have to be particularly computer literate to go and do an e-learning project.